Amen. So keep your place there in 1 Timothy chapter number 4. We're going to be looking at a verse um, in this chapter as we begin. But tonight, um, the title of the sermon is Attacks on Easter. Attacks on Easter. And I talked a little bit to some of the guys. Uh, you know, I, I shouldn't talk to the guys before I'm about to preach a sermon. Because what's on my heart, you know, comes out of my mouth, right? So um, if you've heard some of this, if you were visiting with me earlier, you know, I apologize for that. Um, but I enjoy fellowshipping as, as much as the next guy, all right? Um, but First Timothy chapter 4, um, look down at verse number 7. Um, tonight, I want to tell you um, why you see attacks on Easter and why you will continue to see attacks on Easter. We're going to look at specific categories of attacks on Easter um, this evening. And you say, why are there attacks constantly on Easter? Well, it is the quintessential Christian event, Easter, the resurrection of our Savior, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I mean, look, it's the, it's the most important event in the history of mankind, this day that we are celebrating today. And so what is it? It's downplayed, it's covered up, it's falsified, and it's attacked. And that's, it's not going to change. You say, well, why, you know, why is it? I kind of answered my own question on why it is attacked, because it is the most important thing that has ever happened. So Satan, his minions, the people that are the, the rulers of the darkness of this world must try, try to shut it down. They will never shut it down, and that's going to kind of be the positive of the message this evening, but the downplaying. So let's just start with the, the least of all of these attacks this evening. And let me just kind of give you, I'm going to step it up as we go through um, tonight, just so you can recognize these things, um, which I'm sure you do. But, you know, it, Easter is first, it's downplayed, it's covered up, it's written off as a fairy tale. Look down at verse number seven of 1 Timothy chapter four, where the Bible says, but refuse profane and old wives fables and ex exercise thyself rather unto godliness. So fables, fables are something that are make up, they're make-believe stories that have a, a lesson to them. They have a, something we can learn from them, some morality that we can take from these things. And the Bible is saying, leave those fables, those fake things apart. And some, somebody mentioned when we were visiting um, at noon today over lunch, somebody mentioned that, yeah, well, a lot of people read the Bible and they just think that, oh, it's just a lesson in morality and all these things. No, it's not a fable. It's real. It's really God's word. It's the word of what? Of the living God that we serve. All right. But these are things like, you know, attacks on Easter, like the Easter bunny. You say, oh, pastor, you're really preaching against the Easter bunny. Well, just for a minute or two, because what it's doing is it's trying to equate a, a fable or something that's mythical or fake with, you know, something that's real. Because what happens, especially, and who's the Easter bunny aimed at? Again, all these attacks, just think about this for a second. All these attacks are aimed at who? All these attacks are aimed at children. The Easter bunny is not designed for a 40-year-old adult. The Easter bunny and the candy and the eggs and the, you know, all the gifts and all these things is designed to mesmerize and capture the attention of children. And I have never taught my children these fake, it's just the same thing as Santa Claus. Because yep. they're going to grow up and they're going to be like, oh, well, that was fake. What else do my parents lie to me about? And what they'll do is they'll say, okay, the Easter Bunny, I mean, the kid, I didn't even look up when kids like, realize the Easter Bunny isn't real. It's probably, it, it's probably like 19 or something today. But, I mean, you know, I don't know. But what they, you know, it's easy to see Easter Bunny equals fake, Jesus equals fake. That's, that's what's happening here. It's a, it's a switch. It's a bait and switch, all right? So look, Jesus is not a fairy tale. The Bible tells us stay away from fairy tales. Stay away from fables. Stay away from things that aren't real and stick to the word of the living God. But look, I mean, then there's like attacks on Easter in general. Like Easter is actually turned to Acts chapter 12. Easter is a pagan holiday, you know. It, these are like the, the non, the anti-Christmas tree Christians, you know. But look at Acts chapter 12 and verse number four. The word Easter is in the Bible, the King James Bible, one time. All right, let's see if it's a pagan holiday. All right, look at verse number four of Acts um, chapter number 12. The Bible says this. It's talking about Herod. He's just, 
He's just killed James, I believe, in Acts chapter 12. We've studied through this. And when he apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. I think this was, who was this, Peter that is imprisoned here, but he's imprisoned someone after he's killed James. And he is um, intending after Easter. What is Easter? Easter is the season of the Passover. That's, that's all it is. That's what this means. I've solved the mystery for you. So you don't have to go and, and read commentary on this because Easter just means the Passover season. That's it. That's all it means. Okay. Now look, we see that there's a lot of downplaying and attacks on kids with the Easter bunny and all these fake things about, about um, Easter. But then there's people that just literally falsify Easter. They, they say that it is something that it is not, or they cast doubt on Easter. The biggest example I can give you of this, we have seen it out soul winning for the last couple of weeks, it is with the Jehovah's Witnesses. They are passing out, they were out in force, hopefully it was just an Easter thing, because they were out in force in this city in the last two or three weeks, and they're handing out these flyers, they're handing out these flyers that, that have a picture of, you know, fake Jesus on it, and it says, well, let's come celebrate um, Easter with us. You know, it's as a memorial of Jesus' death. And right away, as a Christian, as a Bible-believing Christian, someone who is saved and someone who is going to say, you know, celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter, right away, that should throw up a flag to you. And then if you go and you just read into it a little bit more, you realize that, oh, yeah, it's because the Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe that Jesus actually resurrected bodily from the grave. So, let's celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death. It's odd. It's odd, and it is, it is false, and it is wicked. Look, we aren't celebrating Jesus' death today. Yeah. That's why everyone's in a good mood, and everyone's wearing bright colors, and typically the ladies are wearing, you know, nice dresses, and everyone is, it's a happy, joyful day, because we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right. They don't believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus. Turn to Luke chapter 24, which is very strange because the Bible is super clear that Jesus physically resurrected. He walked around, was seen by 500 people as we saw in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, but look at Luke chapter 24. Look at Luke chapter 24. Let me get turned there myself. I mean, the Bible has so many, and we can't even go to all the examples here, but look at Luke chapter 24, and look at verse number uh, 39. Look at verse number 39. It says, Behold, my hands and feet, that it is not myself. Handle me and see. These are red words if you have a red letter Bible. For the Spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. Amen. He's literally saying, I am not a spirit, I am flesh and bones. Handle me. That means touch me, put your hands on me. John 2, he ate with them in, in verse, I think in verse number 30 of, of uh Somewhere in, in the beginning, yeah, it came to pass, he sat at meat with them, verse 30 of the same chapter. He took bread, blessed it, break, and gave it to them. He ate with them, John 21. Matthew 28, uh, in, in one of the verses, they held, the disciples held him by the feet. I, I mean, it, you know, there's so much evidence. But here's the thing, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't believe the Bible. That's right. And they try to pass themselves off as Christians. And that's what really bothers me today because they're going to the door of people that don't know the Bible and they're pretending to be a Christian. They're pretending to be somebody that represents Jesus, that represents the Word of God, but they don't believe in Jesus and they don't believe in the Word of God. They literally don't believe the Bible. That's why these verses would do you know, nothing for them because they just don't believe it. it it's, it's that simple. So they're, they're charlatans. They're charlatans. They're trying to pretend to be something that they're not. And this is kind of like the good news of what I want to tell you tonight in the conclusion of the sermon, is that the charlatans are taking their masks off today. They're taking, they're unveiling who they really are today. The Jehovah's Witnesses don't, they don't believe in, in so many things in the Bible. They believe that the second coming was in 1914. <laughs> but, but here's what you do, right? It, when you predict, I mean... I guess it's a kind of nuanced thinking, because if you're going to choose an end time date, and then it doesn't happen, 
I guess the only thing you can say at that point is it was secret and, and it was, you know, it just no one knew about it. God didn't tell us about it. It was an invisible spiritual event that occurred. In, yeah, it, it happened. It was just invisible and we all missed it. All right? Look, they just don't believe the Bible, folks. They don't believe the Bible at all. All right? But how about media and TV? Media and TV are tr constantly trying to falsify and cover up the truth of the Bible as well. When I, back when I used to have TV, even before I was saved, I used to notice this all the time. Every single year, every single year during the Easter season, the Discovery Channel and the History Channel would run all these biblical things. They would run all these biblical, and I was like, man, I wonder if it's changed. Newsflash, it has not. All right, they would run all these things back when I remember I mean, it's like maybe 15 years ago. They would run all the things on the false gospels, on the, oh, they found the real gospels. You know, we've had the fake ones for 2,000 years, and they finally found the real ones, right? And they would just run all these things. Because what do people want to see? They want to see some new thing. And so they run these fake gospels, and that's where the, you know, some guy wrote a stupid book called The Da Vinci Code that said Jesus was married, and just, it was just all this ridiculous stuff that got a lot of attention, though. And all this stuff they kept replaying at when? At Easter, the week of Easter. So I went and I looked up just the History Channel, the History Channel, because History Channel and Discovery Channel, aren't these the channels that that's where the truth is? That's where the truth is. All the other stuff is sitcoms and, and fake news and all this stuff, but the conservatives are like, I watch the History Channel, so I know history. I'm like, so I looked up the History Channel uh, schedule for this week, and sure enough, Bible secrets revealed. <laughs> Bible secrets revealed. And it's a whole series. Bible secrets revealed by the people at the History Channel. Bible secrets revealed. The Promised Land. I can only imagine where that one's going. The Bible beginnings. I'm sure that's going to be, I'm sure that's going to be young earth. Literal Bible interpretation. I mean, you get to see the, the, you could just see the wickedness of these programs without even looking into the programs. Yeah. The beginnings, the next one is the Bible mission. You know, the mission, what's it about? What's the Bible about? The Bible passion, I'm sure that's going to be um, some interpretation of who they think Jesus was. But here people are going to watch these things on Discovery during Easter weekend, thinking that they are taking in spiritual things. It's not going to be like, it's not going to be like people that have no interest in the Bible that watch that. Right. It's going to be people that have some kind of semblance of wanting to know what's in the Bible that are going to watch that. Go to the Discovery Channel. Here it is. I mean, it's just, it's not even original anymore. I mean, it's forbidden history, the Bible. And then it's like Noah's Ark is one of them. Then it's, uh, which, I mean, I can't, the, the one event... The one event that people that hate Christianity point at the most is like the flood and Noah's Ark. They're like, oh yeah, you believe that? Yes, I believe that, because that's what happened. That's, right. that's what archaeology proves. That's what the Bible says literally happened. The Bible didn't say like, hey, this is, you know, some analogy of anything. No, it's what actually happened. It's history. Then there's another one um, on forbidden history. Secrets of Vatican history. And then concealed by the Vatican. And what is this one doing? You can see, look, I, I don't have to look into these. You know what they're doing? Is they're trying to take the wicked Catholic Church and equate it to Christianity. Yeah. You see? Because I'm sure there's a lot. You ever read up on the popes? Like, you couldn't let your kids read it. I mean, there's a lot of wicked history, aside from the fact that they, that, that church has killed millions of actual Christians. For, for trusting and believing in the word of the living God. For having the word of the living God. For possessing it. For possessing a Bible. They burned Christians. There's the truth of the Vatican. That's right. Right there. They burned Christians for having the word. Why would they do that? Because when you're teaching something that is the opposite of this, you can't have people reading this. Yep. Concealed by the Vatican. And then, and then again, uh, so unoriginal, finding Mary Magdalene. And you know what the, where that's going. That's going down this old road of, it's like, come, on, come up with something original, at least. 
I mean, to the 2024 Christian, I mean, why not read the Bible? I mean, why not actually just read? Imagine how stupid it is to let someone who is not even saved and hates the Lord even, doesn't understand the Bible, tell you what's in it. That's what's happening here. That is what is happening. And, you know, I wonder what percentage of Christians, I'm talking about people who are actually saved, I wonder what percentage it is. I bet you it's a very, very small percentage. What, per, what percentage of saved believers today have read the Bible from the front to the back? Because if, if you've read it through one time, you will see how ridiculous all these things are. And if you're saved, you can understand it. Why would you not read it? That should be a goal for all Christians. That, for me, that should be a, like one of the first goals in your Christian life after you get saved, besides getting into church and getting plugged in to a local assembly of believers, you should endeavor to read through your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And then you should do it again. You should do it again, and you should do it again. Because you will never get to the point where you read through your Bible a second time or a tenth time or a fifteenth time and you do not have more things open to you. It is the word of God. It is not the word of some author that sat down and wrote it. Well, see, this is the problem today. This is the problem. This is what the conservative Christian in the United States is watching, is this garbage that is falsifying the word of God. Then, I mean, then, then the rest of the, the programs, Valley of the UFOs. <laughs> Nuclear UFOs. I'm not making this up. Killer Sasquatch. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. Put your phones away. A couple of you are subscribing to Discovery Channel right now. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> it, reads, it reads like how we ended up with the leadership we have in our country right now. That's what it reads like. Because you know what? This is what conservatives are doing in this country. I can't tell you how many conservative people, hard-working conservative people that I know that, that just, they feast on this garbage. Killer, what, did you see the episode of Killer Sasquatch last night? Why don't you just, why don't you just go, you know, why don't you just, seriously, why don't you just waste your entire life? Why don't you just go do heroin and, and fall over and foam at the mouth for four hours. I'm, I'm, I don't do that. But I'm just like, is, could you waste your life any more completely than this? Nuclear UFOs. Conservatives today, I mean, they're, they're idiots and their families are being stolen from them as they're watching this stuff. The third category I have for you tonight is just straight up attacks on Christ. And that kind of already is a tax on Christ. But turn to Joshua chapter 24. <clears throat> I need someone to go get my phone out of my office. Could, Garrett, could you go do that? Straight up a tax on Jesus Christ. And you will see, I, I've never seen it as bad as I saw it this year. But turn to Joshua chapter 24. And if you have any doubt that the leaders of the United States of America hate the Lord today, I want to show you a couple things. I almost couldn't believe it. I almost couldn't believe it. But I kind of mentioned it in the, I kind of mentioned it in the sermon this morning. But the Biden White House declares Easter, March 31st, Transgender Day of Visibility. Now, I want to show you something. They also had an Easter egg art contest where kids could send in Easter egg pictures of art. But they had a rule, no religious symbols or connotations on this. It's Easter. I want to read this to you. I want to read some things here. I have my, my phone here, and I, I took a picture of the White House comments on certain religions. And now I'm going to tell you the good news. I'm going to tell you the positive news of this. You're like, it's terrible. I'm, not, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you two points on the silver lining here, on why it's good. The first point I want to show you on why this is good. You can say, well, how could a straight-up attack on Christ be good? pastor, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you the first one is this. I'm going to read these, these statements on other religious events from this same White House, and I want to show you that the first reason that it's good is because it shows that we are over the target. That's what. 
Here's the statement from the White House on Ramadan. 10.48 p.m., 3.10, in March 10th, 2024. From President Biden. Tonight, as the new crescent moon marks the beginning of the Islamic holy month of Ramadan, Jill and I extend our best wish wishes and prayers to Muslims across our country and around the world. Hanukkah. 11.20 a.m., 12.14, 2023. <clears throat> President Biden. Lighting the menorah is a reminder to hold on to the miracles of hope and faith. Because when we do, no night is so dark that we can't find the light. Happy Hanukkah. And first of all, like, what? But I mean, he makes at least a nice message about it. Kwanzaa, and I, I'm not, still not even sure what this is. President Biden, 12-26-21. As we begin the seven days of Kwanzaa, Jill and I send our best wishes to everyone celebrating. May this time of reflection of the rich heritage of African American culture bring peace, unity, and joy. Oh, that was nice. Easter. Now I therefore, Joseph R. Biden Jr., President of the United States of America by virtue and authority vested in me by the Constitution and laws of the United States do, by hereby, do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2024. That's today, folks. Resurrection Sunday. That, that's me saying that. I do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2024 as Transgender Day of Visibility. Thank you. It would be unbelievable if you didn't actually see that it actually happened. But again... All the other religions, nice, flowery, you know, statements. Easter, I hate it. Easter, I worship the devil. Easter, I'm with Satan. Hey, at least they're not hiding it. So number one, that's how you know you're over the target, folks. When the wicked people are just straight up against your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, praise God. That nobody is, is you know, the, the mask is off. And that's the second point. Are you in Joshua chapter 24? People are going to have to choose a side. Yep. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yep. You see, I used to, it used to bother me when I was in my 20s. When I was in my 20s, I was really political. I was really like, yeah, Republicans. Like, ah. Yeah. But like, I was like Republican and... You know, I was against the Democrats and all this. And, 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 uh, and one thing that really bothered me was when Republicans and Democrats would run against each other, the Democrats would try to be conservative. They would try to pretend like they were conservative. They would pretend like they weren't liberal. And then when they got elected, then, of course, they were liberal. But then the thing that you figure out is like the Rep Republicans, you know, they pretend to be conservative too. So they're both pretending to be conservative and then the Republicans get elected and they become the liberals too. You're like, what's going on here? It's a, it's a scam. But the point is, is they weren't being honest. They weren't being honest about who they were. And they weren't being honest about what they believed and, and the things that they believed and the things that they were for. Hey, the mask is off. And let me tell you something, this is how God wants it. In Matthew, 20, in Matthew 12, verse 30, I'm just going to read it for you. The, God says this, he says, He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. God is saying, make a choice. Jesus is saying, make a choice. Make a choice. God can't stand the gray. Because guess what? There is no gray. Is what Jesus is saying. Look at Joshua chapter 24, and verse number 15. Jesus Christ was saying, make a choice. Joshua 24, that's why Jesus said in Revelation 2, talking to the churches, he's like, there, there was a church that was lukewarm. He's like, I'll just spew you out of my mouth. It's disgusting. Yeah, make a choice. There is no gray. Look at verse 15. Joshua says this before they are to cross into the promised land. If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord... Choose you this day. Do you understand what he's saying? He's saying, choose now. Quit thinking about it. 
Choose you this day whom ye will serve. What are the choices? Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He's like, you're going to go serve all these pagan gods that aren't gods? You're going to go serve all these wicked, false gods? You know, he's not saying, don't do that. He's saying, make a choice. Make a decision. He's like, we're about to enter conflict. Make a choice now. And he says, as far as my choice goes, I've already made it. My choice, my family, myself, we've already made our choice. Look, the, being a Christian equals persecution. Those two things go hand in hand. And so when you make a choice as a Christian, this is why Christians don't want to make a choice. Because they don't want to go through persecution. They don't want to have, you know, people be, and look, persecution is so light affliction today. But Joshua, I mean, Joshua, they were entering into war. Making a choice to serve the Lord meant some of them were going to physically die. I mean, for us, it's like, uh, I might have to go through light affliction, you know. Someone in my family might, might speak harshly to me. It's like, but look, folks, choose and there will be persecution. But people want to stay in the gray. They want to stay out of trouble and the way they stay in the gray is they say, well, you know, it's, it's not really that bad what these people are doing and what they're saying. But they're, they're literally coming out and they're saying, we worship the devil. They're literally coming out and they're saying, we love Satan and we hate the Lord Jesus Christ. I used to try to point these things out to the church members and there was a moment, there was a moment when there was some flag um, some, uh, a pride flag uh, flying out of somebody's apartment and they had a small balcony. It was on the third level downtown. I took a picture of it and I showed it to the church. <clears throat> but I had made this connection years ago. There was a pride flag on one side of the balcony and there was a, a, a satanic um, Church of Satan sign flying straight next to it. And I was just like, yes, yes, yes. Picture. Why? Because, th because that's who they are. Because that's who they are. They love, they hate the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love, you know what those are? Those are proofs. Those are proofs. When you see somebody driving around with a, uh, you know, they've got a, a pride flag and then they've got a, a, a sticker that says, I hate your family on the other side of the car. Those are proofs. Those are proofs. But they are literally showing you who they are. Choose you this day. America, who you will serve. Make a choice. And Joshua says, but for me, I've already chosen. Look, I've hope, I hope you've already chosen, and quite frankly, the fate of this country and God's reaction towards the United States of America, it depends on how people choose. It will depend on how individual people choose, because these are attacks on the living God that we are talking about. They are people as David said, that are defying the army of the living God boldly to his face. And look, if I'm going to get attacked, I would much, I would choose to my face over behind my back any day. Amen. Any day of the week. Because I want to know, you know what? I want to know who's with me and I want to know who's against me. If that means I get popped in the face, big deal. But I want to know. And that's what Joshua is saying. I want to know who's with me before we go. He's like, make a choice. Look, there is no gray. There is no gray. America, and I'm not talking to the folks here. You already, you already, got, the, you already got it taken care of. But America needs to understand the American, the conservative Christian that is, you know, spending all his time drinking beer and watching this garbage on TV. He needs to understand that, guess what, folks? It's not fake they really want your children. Yep, yep. It's real. They will destroy your sons and your daughters. This is what they want. How do I know? Because this is what they're saying yeah. to your face. Persecution? So what? Amen. I mean, are you kidding me? Bring it on. You just think of... Think of God's, 
Think of God's design of the family. Think of, think of our idea that we have. Talk about two competing ideas. Think of God's design of the family. You think about God's design for parents and God's design for grandparents. Children's children are the crown of old men, the Bible says. You think about God's design for families and parents and grandparents. And I was in the pharmacy just yesterday. There was a long line, and there was this young boy. He was maybe four years old. He had a cough just like me. I'm not contagious, by the way. You know, I, I called the doctor. I diagnosed myself, and I told her exactly what medication I wanted. He's like, that sounds right. <laughs> Healthcare in America today. Anyway, there's this little four-year-old boy, boy, and he's sitting there with his grandparents. And I was sitting there waiting, and I was waiting for almost an hour. And I just, you know, I had to think, like, where are this kid's parents? The thought went through my head. And but you know what I was thinking? You just think about the design of, of, of God and how clear and how, how complete his design is. I was thinking that, where are this kid's parents? But you know what? At least his grandparents are there. Isn't that great? And you wonder, like, you know, why does the Bible talk so much about marriage and how to have a good marriage and, and getting married and having children, you know, after you get married and doing things in the proper order and why, why you should have follow all these things in the Bible that seem counterintuitive to what the world is teaching today? Why should you follow all these things in the Bible about the structure of the family, about the structure of my home, about the structure of, of a husband and a wife? Why should I follow all those things? Why does God want strong marriages? He wants strong marriages because where there's kids with parents, there's, not, there's kids with protection. There's kids that aren't vulnerable to these types of attacks. And even then, you got the grandparents there to stop those things. Look, God's plan will work. God's plan will work in any environment. You think about, you know, we're carrying, we're carrying Jesus to the people. And they're carrying Satan to the people. And the people know it's bad. Because the people have a conscience that tells them it's bad. We just met this sweet old lady yesterday. And she just like, she pointed, she brought us in her house. And she's feeding my wife all this food. And, and myself, not my wife, she's feeding us, myself and my wife, all this food. And she's just pointing to the door. And she's like, it's crazy out there. It's crazy. Just like where? Everywhere out there. She, it's just crazy. But they know. The world knows. And the more they drop the mask the more the world knows. And what are we doing? We're carrying the best idea. Yeah. We're carrying the perfect solution. It's wonderful. They, it's like playing cards with somebody who's showing you their hand. They're like holding their cards backwards. Yeah. You're like in a high stakes poker game and they're holding their cards backwards and you've got a royal flush and they've got like, you know, one, two, five, seven, you know, nine, ten out of all different suits. And they're like, oh, I want to play cards? I'm like, yeah, I want to play cards with you. All the time. Don't gamble. It was just an analogy. <laughs> See, because the conscience is so powerful for us. It really is so powerful for us because, you know, people out there that, you know, I hope my boy grows long hair and dresses like a girl, said no parent ever in the history of mankind. And this is what they want to happen. We have the best idea. We have a risen Jesus Christ. We have a risen Jesus Christ. We have salvation. What do you have to do to get it? No work. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we have all the answers for your family. Why? Because we're, we're brilliant people? No, because God gave us his word. I mean, you, you could take this stuff and just be really depressed about it, but I, I think there's a lot of opportunity here, yeah, yeah. is what I'm saying. Guess what we can do? We can go soul winning. Yeah. We were looking up the other night, we had, uh, Garrett and I and, and uh, some of the family were looking up like countries you can't go soul winning, in, soul winning in. There's a lot. There's a lot of countries that you can't go soul winning in. A lot of countries in the West 
that you cannot evangelize in. And you know what? You know what's interesting about it? One of the main reasons, and one of the main reasons they cite, what? Jehovah's Witnesses. So you got these false prophets that have literally worn people out and worn governments out, so they cast this wide net and they shut out the truth to the people. But guess what we can do here today? We can go out and we can preach the Bible to people. We can preach the gospel to people in America today. And the other side is playing with their cards backwards. So when you get, when you run into people, you're not going to run, you're going to run into less and less people that don't know what Satan's side stands for today. Because they are straight up telling you. They are walking around with signs that say they want your kids. They're walking around with signs. They're doing things like the White House did, you know, this week. Now, look, when I look at what America was and what it is now, yeah, that can be a little depressing. But also, if you put it in just historical context, folks, I mean, you look at the Bible, you look at the times of Manasseh, you look at even the times of Jesus. I mean, the Roman times that Jesus and the disciples were in, that was a freak show. It was a violent freak show. And look, the more perversion that enters into a society and the more a society goes the way that our leaders are trying to take the society, violence will come with that. The Bible is very clear about that. It's not from God's people. Violence towards God's people will increase. But right now, folks, no one in the USA is going to stop you from coming to church. Even during COVID, we went to two Red Hot preaching conferences during COVID. I mean, no one stopped us at the church doors from coming to church during COVID. No one is going to stop you from going soul winning in 2024 America. We get to go present Jesus. We get to go present the best idea when these people are showing openly the most wicked idea. So look, no one's going to stop you. No one's going to stop you from homeschooling today. You can protect your kids today Amen. in America. No one's going to stop you from bringing your kids to a family integrated church where, you know, you can have a, a, a four-year-old sit down and, and explain a dissertation of the gospel to you, throwing in several heresies along the way. Four. No one's going to stop you from raising your children that way. But see, the reason that the conservative today or the Christian today, even if they're saved, won't go down these paths, I don't even really think it's an avoidance of conflict, to be honest with you. You know what I think it is? I think it's a love of money is the first one. And I think they just want to fit in is the second one. They want to go with the flow. They want to go with the status quo. But you know, you have to ask yourself, if this is you listening to this sermon, you have to ask yourself, at what cost? At what cost do you need more money? At what cost do you need to fit in with everybody that you're involved with in your life at this point? Turn to uh, Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. It's selfishness and it's vanity. People need to stand up for the Lord today. Look at Ezekiel chapter number 2. Ezekiel chapter number 2. Look at verse number 1. I was going to show you. I just think this is kind of a cool verse. God wants to tell Ezekiel something. And what does he tell him? You say, maybe I'm reading too much into this, but I don't think I am. Look at Ezekiel chapter 2, verse number 1. He said to me, Son of man, stand up on thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. Don't you sit down when I'm going to talk to you. The Lord says, you know what? I'm going to give you my words. And he gives, he gives them, and he picks them up and puts them on his feet. That's what people need to do today. They need to stand up on their feet and heed the words of the living God. And you know what? We need to stand up for the Lord today. We need to stand up for the Lord today. When people start saying things that aren't true and attacking Jesus Christ, we need to say, no, this is, that's my Lord Jesus Christ you're talking about. We need to have this stuff foisted upon us. These people are on the losing side. 
I mean, Joe Biden is defying the living God. Think about that. He just, look, there is a greater damnation, folks. And he just dropped himself. He just dropped himself down to the likes of some of the worst people on this planet. And look, I think he was already pretty low. But he took the elevator down a couple hundred stories this week. Nobody's getting away with anything. And thank God that he is showing all of this to us. And more importantly, thank God that he is showing all of the people that we are going to talk to next week this stuff. Because I guarantee you, 90 plus percent of this country doesn't like what happened. I don't know what the percentage is. People don't know the Bible, but you know what? Most people think the Bible is good. People may not know Jesus, but I bet you if you asked, you know, just gave people a poll in this country, is Jesus good or is Jesus bad? The overwhelming majority of people would say Jesus is good. And when you have somebody that just comes out and just spits in the face of Jesus, spits in the face of the entire Christian faith, I'm glad that that shows. Man, it drops any, any masquerade of goodness that was there. It's like, no, I stand with Satan. And these are the people that we're going to talk to. And we're going to present them Jesus. We're saying, let, let us show you the other side. And, you know, you can choose. Family, a loving wife, children. This is what we're selling. I mean, can you believe it? People are like, no, choose Satan, a horrible life and an eternity in hell. It's, it's a great opportunity, all these attacks. Yes, I, I am personally offended, of course, for people that would defy the living God, but we need to take this as a positive and take this as an opportunity to save who we can. Happy Resurrection Day. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the fact that he will be victorious. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. Even Joe Biden's right before he's thrown into the lake of fire. Amen. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer.